monster tornado uh, that we're watching right now, at least two miles wide, two miles. It devastates uh, the Oklahoma City area. This is a huge urban area. Hundreds of thousands of people live in this area. This is what it looked like within the last two hours or so during the Twister's long and terrifying assault. And this is what it looks like now. Uh, some people saying like a major war area, bombs going off. Look at this destruction in this area. It's clear from the pictures the damage is catastrophic and we're only beginning to see this destruction. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to get a whole lot worse, we're told, by local authorities. People are still trapped in big numbers in the wreckage. Some are still hunkered down because the storm danger certainly has not yet passed. Look at this. We believe this, this is an elementary school, an elementary school literally torn to shreds. There's a desperate attempt underway right now to rescue dozens and dozens of children still trapped in the wreckage. And we're getting firsthand accounts of the damage, the rescue operation, and the raw fear when the tornado hit. Uh, this is an awful, awful story. And unfortunately, it's only just beginning. Uh, let, let's uh, go to our uh, affiliate, uh, KOCO, uh, for more because they're interviewing survivors. Gone. Um, me and four other guys pulled a teacher out. She was on top of three kids. The kids were fine. She was hurt pretty bad. We put her on a door and then put her on top of a Jeep and wheeled her out to the ambulances because there were so many cars around. But other than that, as far as I know, the, most of the kids got out. And I know a lot of parents have, have been trying to get a hold of our station, trying to find out if their kids are okay. Again, though, describe that scene uh, and, and exactly what was going on when you got over there. Uh, kids everywhere, people running around screaming. Uh, there was cars on their sides. School's just gone. I mean, you really can't tell what was the front and what was the back anymore. And people were yelling for help? Uh, yeah, so to speak, yeah. Looking for their children. So I, we've gotten reports that I guess a search and rescue mission is going on right now with first responders. What have you heard? Do you, are you in contact with anybody at the school? Um, no, I don't, I don't have any kids. So, I mean, as far as I know, they've gotten all of them out. Have you had a chance to walk up and down this street? And if so, what are you seeing? What are people telling you? Uh, my house is pretty untouched, but as far as I can see, everybody else's, their houses are just gone. Um, I pulled this gentleman out here in the wheelchair, and I mean, he was he was all right, but everybody else is, seems to be fine. Describe what it was like, though, when this tornado was coming through. Um, I just stepped outside whenever I saw it behind the house, and I ducked back inside and hit the bathroom, and then I just heard everything crumbling around me. Why, why did you come out here, though? What, what, what are you doing now? Um, I just gotten home from work. I hadn't really heard anything about it. Um, and I just heard the wind howling outside, so I had to get out there and see what was going on. I know there's tons of traffic all over the city of Moore. We're hearing lots of rumors uh, about injuries, potentially uh, fatalities. Um, what have you heard and what have you seen in other areas other than this neighborhood? Other than this neighborhood, I haven't been anywhere. Um, heard. Uh, Briarwood Elementary's gone. Um, there was a fire a couple streets down. Several, I saw several people hurt. Policemen trying to get them out. Other than that, I was just trying to make sure everybody's all right. And I can uh, smell in the air right now. There's that smell, that potent smell of, of gas. What, what, what are we? What's going on? It's just most people's gas meters in their backyards are broken. Lots of power lines are down. Um, everything's just gone. Just, yeah. <laughs> Right now, though, uh, and just getting a look at this as my photojournalist Brian Dixon just shows us the street, all this destruction. It is truly stunning to think that everybody has, has gotten out alive. When you look at this, what goes through your mind? How sad it is. It's uh, really All right, sad let's uh, break away from KOCO uh, and go to KFOO, KFOR, our other affiliate. They have an update on the uh, destruction of the school. As they try to get back, a lot of the folks who have been joining in the search efforts, because quite frankly... It is noisy, and if there are children who are crying or screaming for help, they can't get to them. So they're trying to get uh, some hysterical parents back. Every possible emergency personnel is doing their best to pull the victims out alive. I did speak to a teacher. Her name was Rhonda, sixth-grade teacher here. She is 
nothing short of a hero. She had six kids with her in the bathroom. She laid on top of them as the storm passed through. They are all alive, all accounted for. I also understand that the fourth, sixth, or pardon me, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade students were all accounted for and have been moved to a church that is in the area, and they are safe there. So right now, still unaccounted for, uh, I suppose, kindergarten, first, second, and third graders. Uh, still no word on, on those kids right now, but uh, parents are just now beginning to arrive, kind of weep through all the mayhem, and as you can expect, they want to help. They're uh, yelling at rescuers, why aren't they doing more? But believe me, these folks are doing everything they can to uh, to save whoever may be trapped in this debris. They are about to bring in some heavy equipment. I see a tractor uh, about uh, 50 yards from me that they're trying to get in through this mass of humanity so they can hopefully remove some of the heavier debris and get to what's underneath. But uh, for those who may just be joining us, we do know that the third grade class was uh, in a hallway in a classroom taking refuge from the storm, and uh, and that part of the building is completely gone. There's There are no walls standing uh, uh, of this school, it's it is wiped to the foundation. It's just nothing more but than a big pile of debris. And uh, like I said before, we can only hope and pray for the best that they can find uh, these kids and these teachers alive. So, Lance, but, uh, so we can pass this information on to parents because there are some hysterical parents with Sarah Stewart right now whose children attend Plaza Towers Elementary. You're saying the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade students are all accounted for, and where are they? They are at a church, which is about a quarter mile from here. I will see if I can get the information. The name of that church, I don't know right now, but I was told by the teacher that the uh, those grades were escorted there before the tornado hit. They were not in the school at the time, so they are safe. Um, I've just walked up on another triage center. It's um, essentially a red tarp that's laid on the concrete. There's a woman here whose uh, head is wrapped, a blanket over her. Uh, she is breathing. Um, I suspect she's with a loved one right now. I don't know if she's associated with the school or not, because as we mentioned before, this is the school is in the middle of a neighborhood and the neighborhood is gone as well. So uh, there will be victims at the school and I suspect in many of the homes around here as well. Yeah, unfortunately, it sounds like there will be. And, and the folks got to know that those rescue workers have to step gingerly there. They can't move real quickly. They don't want to step on a student or that may be buried under some rubble. They want to listen for uh, voices, maybe kids. Uh, uh, crying for help or just crying and um, so that's why they have to move a little bit slower than maybe the parents would like absolutely and let me tell you there are obviously raw emotions out here even mm -hmm. among the rescue workers when uh, a sergeant with the Oklahoma City Police Department was asking people to to get back he was cheering up as he was confronted by a father who was upset that they weren't doing more so obviously it's traumatic for everybody and they are doing everything in their power to get these kids to get these faculty members out of this debris Lance, we hate to deal with numbers, but parents who are watching need to hear these numbers so they can understand what's transpiring because the numbers tell the story. When we talked to you about an uh, hour ago, 30 minutes ago, you said that 75 students were believed to be in the school at the time the twister hit. Is that still the case? That is the last count that we have, that in this particular part of the school, and this is the only area of the school that they're searching in right now, it's the, the south portion of the school. They were, I was told that there were 75 kids who took refuge in that home, which typically has those reinforced cinder block walls. Those are typically the safest place to go when a tornado hits if you can't go underground. Obviously, uh, a tornado of this magnitude, it was not able to, uh, uh, to withstand to Mother Nature, and that area is wiped out. We did talk the to four, a, a the parent fourth, earlier. fifth, and sixth graders apparently were taken out of the school before it hit. Before it hit. Now, because you talked about 30 that were taken out of the school and relocated at a church. That, that is correct. I spoke to a parent, and he said early on, initially, there were 30 children that were taken out of this particular area of the school, the south portion. Now, I don't know that those include the fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. I believe that they were gone before the tornado hit. They were evacuated and taken to a church which uh, is uh, to our south. And I'm still trying to get some details on the name of that church. But, uh, that's sort of a rallying point right now for parents as they're looking for the kid. And just to clarify one more time, it's the third grade class that appeared to be in the hallway that, re that searchers are looking for right now, some third graders. Is that correct? That is, that's what I've heard from one rescuer and also from a teacher, that this was the area where the third grade kids had taken refuge from the storm. And based on the young man who I saw pulled out a while back, I would say about the age, third grade. Right. So maybe okay. eight, nine years old. And, and he was fine, uh, along with a school teacher, and they have been 
uh, taken off to a nearby hospital. I suspect that they are uh, alive and well. And uh, the search continues tonight, and we're not going anywhere. We're going to be right here. Lance West, thank you very much. We can't tell you how much we hope to be able to report that every one of those children is alive and well. We will continue to stay on top of it for you parents who can't make your way there. Our hearts go out to you. Absolutely. We feel for you. We're going to get you the information as quickly as we can and as accurately as we can. Speaking of information, we need to get some new accurate information on the Storm Center right now. Let's go over to Mike Morgan for the latest All right, on so we're that. going to Mike. continue uh, to monitor our affiliates, KFOR, KOCO uh, in Oklahoma City. The damage is devastating, as you can see, uh, especially we've been following these uh, two elementary schools that suffered enormously, the Plaza Towers Elementary School in Moore, Oklahoma, the Briarwood Elementary School in Oklahoma City. Uh, and uh, we're following the, the rescue operation that is now underway, these first these preschool, uh, pre-kindergarten through sixth graders uh, in both of these elementary schools. Look at the destruction. Look at the pictures that are coming in. Uh, David Massey is joining us on the phone right now. He took some video, short video clips, uh, posted them on Vine, on Twitter, these Vine videos. Uh, David, I, I want to play these little videos for our viewers, and then we'll discuss what's going on. Now, watch this. Here's the first one. Uh, and and we, we, just see your vi we just see your video, and then your words on the right. Here's a tornado literally right by our home. Uh, and you yeah. can see that tornado moving close uh, right there. David, uh, you, 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 are you on the phone? Yes, I'm here. Tell us what it was like. Well, uh... You know, it was very close to our home. Uh, if it would have been heading north, it would have uh, hit our neighborhood. And I was with my father to uh, go head north to try to get to a storm shelter at a grandparent's house. And that's about the time that the uh, storm went east into that Moore neighborhood uh, with uh, where I went later and took those videos. Here's the second video that you posted. Completely obliterated neighborhood two miles from my home. Uh, describe what we're seeing. Uh, well, I parked my car and walked towards where I saw the police cars and all the people. And uh, I was walking towards the neighborhood, and then, you know, you really see the devastation. That entire neighborhood was leveled. People were running down the street. People were crying. And uh, there's plenty of first responders blocking the roads off and, and uh, going towards the scene. Here's another one. Uh, the middle of, of a leveled neighborhood. Trapped people are calling for help. You saw trapped people, uh, David? Uh, yes, I heard people calling for help. There was one woman. Uh, she just needed help getting up. There was debris over her, but she was unhurt. Uh, I did see a young man. He was walking through the neighborhood. He just looked stunned. He had his hands over his arms over his head, crying. And the man who told me later that he was pulled out from underneath rubble and he was unhurt but he was looking at his destroyed house. Uh, he looked like he was alone, uh, looking for family or just anything. You, you, you posted this one. This is a very sad one. These men are looking for a, li a lost little boy named Tommy. Uh, had, did they find him? Do you know? Uh, no. Uh, I was in the middle of the neighborhood, and a woman ran up and said that a little boy was missing, and he was possibly in one of the homes underneath the rubble. And so all the... This was just a group of men that were helping out that were organized, and they ran over to on top of the home and were screaming his name, uh, but they, they didn't get a response uh, from him, and they ran to another area, and uh, I was pretty overwhelmed. That's the time I, I got walked away when they couldn't hear anything from him. David Massey, thank you very much for sharing these emotional stories, sharing this video with our viewers. Uh, good luck to you. Good luck to everybody in Oklahoma. We're just getting word, by the way, that the Oklahoma Department of Emergency Management uh, confirming that the National Guard in Oklahoma has been activated in response to these tornadoes. We're also getting word that uh, the preliminary rating of damage created by the Moore, Oklahoma tornado is, least, is at least, at least an EF4. That would be 166 to 200 miles per hour. Uh, the National Weather Service uh, said this on Monday, an EF4 tornado, 166 to 200 miles an hour. I want to show our viewers a picture of the uh, Plaza Towers Elementary School in Moore, Oklahoma. Here it is. This is Plaza Towers before this tornado hit this area, uh, and you saw the destruction, the devastation, 
afterwards. Chad, you're with us right now. Our viewers who are just tuning in, they're seeing these awful images, the destruction in Moore, Oklahoma and elsewhere. Uh, update our viewers, first of all, on what has happened, Chad. About three and a half hours ago, we saw the first storms pop up near Duncan, Oklahoma, southwest of Oklahoma City, about 100 miles. Then a few more popped up, and one started to rotate near Newcastle, Oklahoma. Now, that's just southwest of Oklahoma City. It continued to rotate, and quickly, from nothing to a funnel to an EF2 on the ground in just five to ten minutes, and then it grew in size, and it kept growing. And you just said the EF4 tornado, that's preliminary. There may be higher wind gusts somewhere, but that would be my exact guess, an EF3 to an EF4 at this point, which means many of the walls of homes will be gone, but there may still be an interior closet, an interior room that will still be okay. If you get to the EF5, that's over 200 There'll be nothing left except the concrete slab that the house once sat on. Something else I want to talk about here, Wolf, I don't believe we're done just yet. There's a tornado warning for the town of Comanche, Texas. I believe there very well may be a tornado on the way to you, Comanche, Texas, southwest of Dallas-Fort Worth. And Dallas-Fort Worth, although 100 miles away from you, there are still tornado possibilities can getting to you, especially in the Fort Worth neighborhoods, probably in the next hour and a half or so. Henrietta. About here, a little bit farther to the north, into Oklahoma, still possibly tornadoes here. Up toward Bartlesville, all these big red boxes means that any storm that develops, that moves toward you, especially the southwest side of any discrete storm like that one right there, that could be rotating and there could be a tornado on the ground at any time. You still need to watch these storms. They're not done yet, Wolf. Chad, hold on a minute. Uh, KFOR Chopper uh, reporter is uh, narrating what he's seeing right now. Listen to this. What is striking to me on top of the roof that's they have a roof like we do it's just a it's a, a a plastic or a rubber vinyl roof over you know a flat pitch well they've got shingles and stuff on there that came from the neighboring houses uh so that building when they put it up yeah go ahead yep we'll be on it here in a second go to your left travis Keep going left and straight down. It's right out my door. Okay, we're zoom out. Right there, there it is. Right there. For rescue workers, we talked to Betsy Randolph with the OHP Oklahoma Highway Patrol about 24 minutes ago, according to my notes, and she said responders were having a very difficult time even getting in to the area because I-35, as you had told us before, traffic had been stopped so people couldn't drive into the storm, but then you had traffic backed up for miles with nowhere to go and now responders can't get through. Yeah, it's, it's a definite, uh, and when we got gas to go, people asked me if they're ready to go home and they said, hey, how, how can we get out of here? And I said, well, you might just wanna, you know, I know it stinks, you gotta stay here tonight, but you're gonna clog up the roadway with people that need to get on here. It might not be a bad idea just to stay in place. Um, I-35 at Indian Hills Road on the northbound lane is backed up all the way to uh, 110A, which is going to be the Robinson Street exit there in, uh, in Norman. So traffic is backed up all the way there. I'm looking back to the north, and I'm not seeing very, I'm not really seeing any traffic on, out, on southbound I-35. So they have to be backed up or shut down probably about the I-40 at the Dallas Junction. So I don't know if they're sending them down I-44 or other ways, or if, hey, if maybe they just stop the roadway completely. Um, but again, on these, like on, uh, let's see here, on Santa Fe, just south of uh, 4th Street, there's still cars that are blocked up right there. And part of this is from uh, the police did a great job blocking people off when they saw where the damage path was, and they weren't even letting people continue to climb in there, or to continue to drive in there. So I think part of that's a backlash of that. And uh, now in some of these neighborhoods, people are coming home, they're getting off work or they left work and they want to see, you know, the state of their house and, you know, see their belongings and maybe make sure loved ones are still there. And that's and, uh, the so school I'm seeing there. a lot more cars in what used to be these housing additions. John, but let's this, focus what on, Travis is on, showing you right now yeah. is the Plaza Towers. Yeah, that elementary school, John. And it looks like they're moving in a bunch of uh, uh, little, those backboards. Yeah, that's the... Uh, Hang on one second, H.E. Sure, approach. you go right ahead. Now, Lance West is there on the scene. I'm trying to see if we can see him from this vantage point. 
you can, if you were with us about 11 minutes ago when we talked to Lance, he said that the, the authorities there, the search and rescue crews, had set up that yellow tape. You see it there at the bottom of the screen. They had cordoned off the area to keep parents and others back so that they could hear if there were any cries for help from faculty or students believed to be trapped in that rubble. Lance West told us previously that one of the rescuers on the scene indicated 75 children and or faculty could have been in the school when the twister hit. Lance also said that third graders were in a hall where they sought cover and the third grade class is now the focus of many, much of this investigation and much of this search right now. And he also told us that many of the fourth, fifth, and sixth graders, we believe, uh, were led out and were okay at a church there. But of course, our concerns right now are for those little ones that may be trapped in there. And they were let out before the storm hit. That's they what we understand. They were moved to another location before That's the storm understand. hit this school. Right. So our, our concern right now is for the children and faculty who may still be under that rubble. And as if we can go back to Lance, and I don't know, Irish Stogner is producing for us right now. She may be able to contact him, and if so, we'd like to know where he is so that we can zoom on him on Chopper 4 to show what his perspective is of that scene, because we've been going to him live. He's down there somewhere uh, getting information, but again, he may have been moved back, Linda, back beyond those yellow lines there so he's just getting he may be just getting information of what they're telling him right now not getting first-hand stuff it, the information relays between different emergency agencies and uh, that's what sometimes takes so long Lance uh, we're right over the scene right now can you describe to us where you are yes I see Bob Moore chopper four it is to the west of me and I am standing no. uh, where a whole bunch of folks are, are gathered they're bringing out some, uh, some boards some stretchers what looks to be like uh, an all-out effort here momentarily. The National Guard has arrived. Um, I, I do have um, reason to believe that they have found some victims. I uh, asked... Lance, excuse me, I asked, uh, asked one of the medics if he could confirm... It, uh, he just put his head down and said, I, I can't answer that. Okay. Well, I there's so understand. so much That's raw emotion out there right now. And it, uh, we said earlier, when you, when you actually are on the scene itself, because we've all covered these before, uh, through the prism of television, it, it's not what, like it is when you're on the scene and you're seeing the anguish of the parents and of the rescuers and of little ones being pulled out. And it's a very, very tough job. Lance is doing a, a great job of it right now. And of course, we're focused right now on Plaza Tele Towers Elementary. But keep in mind that this whole section of Moore is very similar to this. If people were not underground, their chances of surviving this storm were not in their best interest. It was a horrific storm. Mike Morgan says that, in his opinion, it was three times more intense and that tornado that struck this same general area mm -hmm. May 3rd, 1999. He said this storm was 20 miles long, two and a half miles wide in terms of the, the debris ball as it moved through this area. Mm. He believes it will probably be designated an F4 or an F5 tornado. And if you look at the damage mm -hmm. that yes. we're even seeing from this distance, there's no doubt in your mind that this storm was horrific. Absolutely. As we continue to look, at John shot there from Bob Moore Chopper 4. Travis Shot is in the running the camera for him again tonight as he was last night. Let's talk to Allie Meyer who's on the phone. We'll continue to show you the rescue effort here. But Allie is at Eastern and I-240. We're worried about first responders being able to get in, Allie. What are you seeing right now? Are they able to get uh, where they need to go? Yes, Linda and Kevin, I'm quite a bit further north from where Lance of the Chopper is. I was on I-35 southbound, and what they've done is they've shut down I-35 southbound traffic at I-240. They are diverting all I-35 southbound traffic to I-40 east or westbound. They have reserved those lanes, all four lanes of southbound I-35 traffic for first responders only. And I can tell you that those lanes are being used right now. I saw the Edmond Fire Department, their large semi-truck ready of full of equipment headed southbound, Midwest City Ambulance, Edmond Fire Department, OHP, and countless other agencies screaming, lights and sirens going, headed southbound to the Moore area. 
Unfortunately, I just saw one northbound ambulance with lights and sirens running. There aren't a lot of ambulances coming out right now with victims. I assume they'd be headed to OU Medical Center for the most critical injuries anyway. But a lot of southbound first responder traffic on I-35, of course, you know they're going to have a lot of trouble once they get off I-35 and get into those areas of most serious damage. But for right now, I-35 traffic, if you're headed to Norman or south of Oklahoma City, I-35 southbound is not an open road for you right now. They are reserving those lanes for first responder traffic only. And Allie, as you describe what's going on there, let me interject here that when we talked to Betsy Randolph from the Oklahoma Highway Patrol about 35 minutes ago, she said it is an all call for first responders in Moore, Oklahoma. So if you're at home watching this and you have the abilities and the talents and the knowledge to be of help in this area, and if you are authorized to be a first responder, we ask that you move to that area immediately to help in whatever way you can. Now, we have been focused here for quite some time on Plaza Towers Elementary. This is only one part of a very devastated city. We're there at this moment because of the hope that more children will come out of that school alive. Let me, but let there me, are yeah, injuries go ahead, throughout the city. There are injuries, and I just received an injury update. Now, this is very preliminary, of course, but at Integra Southwest, they have, are treating a total of 19 right now, seven in critical condition, seven serious condition, five are fair or good condition. One of the 19 is a child, and we're not sure what condition that child is in. But again, seven critical, seven serious, five fair or good right now. And we expect uh, those numbers, of course, unfortunately, uh, to go up. And as we talked, I recall talking to doctors after the May 3rd, 1999 tornado struck this same area of Moore. Most of the damages and most of the injuries that they are treating in the emergency rooms are puncture injuries yeah. from flying debris, debris that's been, fall, f been flying mm -hmm. in, the, in the air, sometimes propelled at speeds of 150 miles an hour. You're talking about nails, you're talking about boards, you're talking about any type of metal that has come loose from these buildings that's now become shrapnel and a million knives flying through the air. There's so many lacerations and other more ghastly injuries from these kind of things. People do survive, but they live with these injuries from now on. Let's go back to uh, John Welsh and Bob Moore Chopper 4. John, I know you're navigating with a lot of other traffic up there right now, but uh, the situation from, your, from where you see it, uh, I, I know it's this very early in the search and rescue, but are you seeing anything, anything that any shred of daylight, any shred of hope out there for those worried about loved ones? Uh, you know, we're showing you the uh, the Plaza Tower schools right now, and uh, we do have a lot of rescue crews in there, and they have, uh, looks like some axes and some other stuff that they're trying to just break through this debris. Um, as you, you know, as you can see, that, that whole back of the school has just kind of been pushed around to the front. Um, so there's a lot of guys in there, and they're trying to pull a lot, or, you know, they're trying to uh, get some stuff out. But as far as seeing people walk out or seeing it bring anything out, uh, Kevin, we're not seeing anything. But, uh, you know, again, we're staying right here. There's uh, a lot of traffic. It's picking up in the neighborhoods that uh, people are coming home and looking at their, uh, looking obviously at the, the destruction to their homes and uh, all their property there. But that uh, OHP's on scene. They've got both their helicopters doing a great job. They picked up spotters uh, to help search for people on the ground. Um, we're up here higher um, at 3,500 feet. Uh, zoom and using our camera, the lens, to try and help out. I've asked them, hey, if you guys have any, any areas uh, that you want people to look or that you want us to kind of consolidate our efforts on, just let us know uh, so that we can kind of really help everybody out. That's, that's the name of this game. I don't really care about people seeing pictures of it. My goal right now is uh, to try and help find people in the rubble. So that's what we're trying to do here. Uh, the damage is very severe, and uh, this is nothing like I've ever seen before, Kevin. And John Welsh, to that end, we're trying to provide people with all the... All the right, so there, there you see what's going on at the Plaza Towers Elementary School. On the right, uh, what it used to look like. On the left, live pictures of the devastation, the destruction. Uh, this is a school pre-K through sixth grade. Approximately 500 kids uh, go to this school uh, and we don't know what's going on underneath that rubble. We do, we do know that a major search and rescue operation is underway right now. These are mostly, they're looking, we're told, for third graders uh, who were not removed before this tornado hit Moore, Oklahoma, which is literally just outside 
of Oklahoma City, uh, a major city in the Midwest. Uh, I, I want to show our viewers some of the pictures. If you take a look, you can see some of the knapsacks that were hanging. Uh, if you look up uh, there near the right, there it is, uh, near the right-hand part of your screen. Uh, they were just there uh, as this tornado, uh, an EF4, we're told now, by the National Weather Service, with speeds of between 166 to 200 miles per hour. It ripped through this area of Moore, Oklahoma, right outside of Oklahoma City, and literally leveled, leveled this elementary school, the Plaza Towers Elementary School. This is what it used to look like. And this is what it looks like right now. Nick Valencia uh, is on the scene for us in Moore, Oklahoma. You're not very far away. Nick, tell our viewers what you're seeing. We're right in the strike zone. It's less than a half a mile away. I can see smoke billowing. When we pulled up on the scene with our crew, there was a young man and his friends looking for a lost loved one. He couldn't even find his house, Wolf. It had been completely blown away. I'm looking at devastation as far as my eyes can see, it appears as though there may be people on the second floor of a house. They may, it looks as though they may be trapped there. Uh, it, it, it's, it's looking really bad out here. First responders, sirens wailing. We see fire trucks. On our way here, we had to take the back roads. Some of the roads were flooded out. I-35, of course, uh, as we've been reporting, has also been closed. Uh, we had to uh, snake through and sort of cut through the Moore Cemetery, and that's where we're at. We're, we're right on the edge of the Moore Cemetery. He's completely... Uh, I think our connection with Nick is uh, breaking up. Edge, trees. Just, it, 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 it looks very bad here. I'm sorry, I can't hear you very well. There's, there's first responder helicopters as well hovering right now uh, overhead. There's people running through the streets right now just looking looking for their loved ones, looking for their homes, looking for their possessions. I'm looking at someone right now uh, running towards me. I'm not quite sure where he's going, but the, the, the neighborhood is not standing anymore, Wolf. It, it, it's completely gone. And the pictures we're showing our viewers, Nick, right now, what used to be a beautiful little elementary school in uh, Moore, Oklahoma, <clears throat> the Plaza Towers Elementary School, uh, obviously leveled by this EF4 tornado that ripped through this part of the Oklahoma City metropolitan area. Moore is right outside of Oklahoma City. You see rescue workers uh, on the scene right now. The National Guard of Oklahoma uh, has been activated. More and more re rescue workers are on the way right now. They're trying to find survivors. Uh, they're especially looking underneath the rubble for third graders who may have been trapped at this uh, elementary school, the Plaza Towers elementary school. Uh, this is an awful, awful situation that uh, we're seeing unfold right now. God only knows what's going on there. And it's only one small area of a huge part of the metropolitan area, uh, metropolitan area that has been devastated in Oklahoma City. Uh, uh, let's listen in to KFOR, once again, our affiliate. On their foundation, again, just a couple of minutes ago, walked down to Plaza Towers Elementary. I know people are very curious about that. We talked to a couple of kids actually on our way down. They said they were inside the school when the tornado hit. They said that they were literally uh, being told to hang on to the walls of the interior of that school when the tornado was overhead. A very sad, very sad story. Obviously, one, uh, uh, one of the people we talked to said that a teacher was actually on top, laying on top of three elementary school kids. That teacher was in very, very bad shape. Personally, he didn't think that this person was going to make it through the storm. But again, one teacher laying on top of three kids trying to protect them from the debris. I can tell you right now, Plaza Towers Elementary, as you've seen from the air, is basically gone. I mean, most of the walls are destroyed. There are cars that were tossed into the front of that where the office building is. There's now a car, a Dodge Durango actually sitting in the front uh, of that school where the office is. Again, right now we cannot get our live truck back into that scene. Hopefully in the next couple of minutes we may be able to. The streets have started to clear up a little bit as people were coming into this area just nonstop, complete gridlock 
just about an hour ago. Now it's gotten a little bit better. Right now, again, search and rescue operations are continuing over at the school building. Uh, I don't know for sure how many kids have been taken out of that school. I can tell you a number of kids uh, were taken out, although when we were out there, there were still rescue crews that were uh, out on scene attempting to get kids. The last information I heard from scene just about five minutes ago, they said there may have been kids that were trapped uh, towards the back of the school in the basement area. Again, right now, I don't know how many kids were still in that school, how many got out of the school. But again, we know some of the kids obviously got out of that school because, again, we talked to a couple of them so that uh, some of those kids were safe, escaped injury. Some of the teachers doing their very best to try to protect those kids may have been severely injured, maybe even killed in this storm. Again, it's really indescribable when you look around. You do just literally a 360 degrees everywhere you look. Total devastation in this area. We'll try to have much more as this continues. Back Jesse, to you guys. Jesse, you have to talk to us about those kids who got out. Now, how, where were they that they could possibly have gotten out of that debris? Can you? Oh, he doesn't. Yeah, well, the uh, uh, kids said right that they were actually told to go into the hallways outside of their classrooms, and they were literally hugging the sides of the walls as that tornado was overhead, ripping the school apart. They were in the hallways outside their classrooms, hugging the walls. Again, teachers laying on top of some of those kids as debris was coming into that school. Absolutely indescribable scene. I cannot imagine what it was like for some of those little kids. Just young kids, second, third, fourth grade kids that were in that school at the time. But again, some of them have gotten out. But as we were on scene, there were rescue crews that were asking us if we knew uh, if there were kids still inside. I didn't know. They were asking uh, people that were in that area. They said they were in the, they thought they were in the back in the basement area. There may have still been kids, rescue crews going in there, digging in the back of that school. As you've seen, I mean, there is not much left on that school. So again, it's amazing that anybody got out, but it appears some have. I don't know how many haven't. We'll have to wait and see. Jesse Wells reporting live from Southwest 8th and Ridgeway. We're going to go back to Lance West here in just a moment. We had indicated before that they needed first responders to come down to that area. We're now being told that they ask that you delay that right now. They've got more than they can handle in terms of trying to coordinate the people who are there. So again, if you're watching and had planned to go down to more to help, do not do that at this time. If they need additional help, we'll let you know. But again, do not go to more at this time to try to help. They are asking that you not come into that area. Let me give you an update real quick that was just handed to me. Uh, some students, at least 15 from Briarwood Elementary. Okay. Remember, that was another one that was at Briarwood. At least 15 of those students are at 15, six, uh, 15613, 15613 Vicky Drive. 15613 Vicky Drive. At mm -hmm. least 15 of those students from Briarwood uh, School are at that location. So if you have students or loved ones involved in that school, 15613 Vicky Drive is where you need to uh, go if you want to try and find them, if you can get there. Of course, the problem is, unless they're already yeah. in the Moore area, you're not going to be able right. to get in because they've shut it off to most uh, traffic. Let's go back to Lance West, who is at uh, the Plaza Towers Elementary. Lance, do you have any additional information? Yeah, I'm just outside the yellow tape. I can tell you that Edmund Search and Rescue has joined the effort along with Moore, Oakland City, and several other rescue personnel. They brought a dog in, getting ready to do some search and uh, rescue operations. It does look like they've taken some uh, backboards up to the pile of debris. I've seen some firefighters sort of huddled over this uh, mountain of metal and cinder block, and it looks, from my perspective, like they may be communicating with someone. If there is a victim under that rubble, they haven't been able to reach them yet, but it looks from this vantage point like they may be talking to someone trapped under debris. So that's certainly encouraging, an encouraging yeah, it sign. It is right near... Um, that wall that Jesse Wells had referred to where the kids were supposed to have taken refuge from the storm. And it's right in that general vicinity. So this may be some encouraging news. I should also mention that right across the street, there is a home where about 15 minutes ago, some folks out here heard some cries for help. And there are probably 50 people right now on hands and knees, pulling away boards and debris in hopes of finding that person alive. It was about 15 minutes ago. We were over there checking out the situation and, uh, uh, they, they say they heard some cries for help. Uh, we don't have an update on that, but being over there in that direction right now, it looks like they're still there. They're still picking away boards. Again, that's an encouraging sign. So that's the status right now as far as the search and rescue efforts go. We can tell you that since I arrived here, gosh, I guess it's been about an hour, hour and a half ago, 
They have not pulled anyone out from the school. Early on when we arrived, there was a little boy, probably eight years old, and a school teacher. They had since been taken to a local hospital. I spoke to two other teachers who were also inside the school. They are okay, other than some bumps and bruises. And we do know that fourth, fifth, and sixth graders have been taken to a nearby church, and they have all been accounted for as well. They're doing a head count right now to find out just exactly how many people may still be trapped in the school. Yeah. Lance West, thank you very much. And, of course, there are relatives around the nation who are watching live coverage wondering about loved ones in Moore, Oklahoma. We're attempting to get as much information accurately to you as possible. Our folks on the ground will do that. They're very good at that. Let's go back to Mike because we do still have storms here in Oklahoma, and, Mike. And, Kevin and Lynn, I do want to, I do want to reassure folks that we are tracking everything back here. We have Reed Timmer out. We have four trackers out right now. And we are here with you during this coverage of the destruction down in Moore. We are not, we're, we are plugged in completely. I can guarantee you. If anything, we All right, you're looking at these live pictures thanks to our excellent affiliate KFOR in Oklahoma City. You're looking at search and rescue workers. They're trying to recover anyone who may be trapped underneath the rubble. This is the uh, Plaza Towers Elementary School in Moore, Oklahoma. That's a suburb of Oklahoma City. Uh, there were, used to be about 500 kids, students in that school pre-K through sixth grade. We know some third graders were stuck there. We're hoping they're okay, but you see those rescue workers working feverishly to come up with uh, some, uh, hopefully some rescues. Uh, not far away, Briarwood Elementary School in Oklahoma City itself, that was hit by this tornado, an EF4 tornado. That's the preliminary rating of this tornado, uh, uh, EF4, that corresponds with 166 to 200 miles per hour, and this was a huge tornado, about two miles wide. Chad Myers is watching. All of this, and Chad, you know this area well. You worked in Oklahoma uh, not that long ago. I did, and to see the damage and the destruction of a school like that. And then as the camera pans over to the neighborhood, and I know we we're focused on the school and how bad it was damaged, but it, when he pans just a hundred yards right or left, you see homes that are almost not there. They don't exist. So this school, although taking a direct hit, actually at least has some walls standing. The homes very close have nothing standing. Something else I've noticed, almost scoured the landscape. The grass around the school is gone. The trees are gone. There's nothing left except mud. This had such scour power, literally, that it would take all of the, the knives and the, sh and the shakes and the shingles around and scour the landscape, S take the dirt right away and suck it up into the storm, creating all of that debris. This is going to take a very long time, and I know we're focused on a couple of schools, but there are so many homes. I, I, we haven't shown them, but there are a thousand homes that look just like this that must have people trapped inside. This is going to be a long recovery for the people of Moore. A couple things I want to get to you. Henrietta, Texas, just to the east, I want you taking cover. There is still a tornado on the ground with the storm here. There is a tornado possible here to the southwest of Dallas-Fort Worth. That's Comanche, Texas. And the storms aren't lined up yet. We talked to Mr. Bunting from the National Severe Storms Forecast Center, and he talked about how when the storms are alone, when they're just like that, alone, or here, alone, they can spin like a basketball. But when they begin to line up, they don't spin. They just cause wind damage. It's the spin that we're worried about. Even one here, not that far from St. Louis. St. Louis, the city, you were just put under a tornado watch, which means that you need to watch out. Any storm approaching your city could have a tornado in it tonight. Although it's getting dark, it's getting cooler, it's not over, this storm system will continue well into the overnight hours. Those are the dangerous hours. Make sure you know a weather radio is turned on tonight. Wolf. And as you know, it's going to be dark there in uh, Oklahoma City and more the air, metropolitan area pretty soon. That's going to make the search and rescue operation even more complicated. As much as folks want to go there and help, we're told uh, from the city of Moore uh, to uh, not drive into the damaged areas. They say, uh, quote, our emergency personnel will need access to help victims. If you are not injured, please do not call into 911. We need the lines for injuries. We're also told hey, that President Obama has been informed of what's going on. He and his top Homeland Security advisors through FEMA, they're monitoring the situation. They're receiving updates. Chad, you're getting more information. Wolf, something that happens when this type of event occurs in a city 
is that cell phone towers literally don't work. Everyone's trying to call everyone. The best thing you can do to try to get a hold of someone at this point is to try to text them. And then when a small nanosecond opens up on a cell tower, that text will go through. The receiver will get that text and then be able to text you back. Making phone calls ties up a lot of power. Text if you can. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, Tom Foreman is uh, taking a look at the path of this uh, devastating storm. Tom, uh, what are you seeing? You know, well, to put context what Chad just said, it's important here. Look, here's Oklahoma City right in the middle of the state here. If we move in, you can see the area we're talking about. We've heard a lot of talk about I-35. That's right over here. And this has turned into an absolute choke point. Nobody can come through here. And the reason is quite simple, because this is the fundamental area in which we can see all of this damage. If you trace all these photographs, and you match it up to the map, this is what was hit. More medical center up here, out of commission. The theater, all of these shopping areas hit. All of these homes here. Here is Plaza Elementary School in the middle of all this. This is where we've seen that tremendous amount of damage that has taken place. And if you look at it, you can see that this was the school before, this is the school after, as we've seen so many times. But as Chad noted, and I really want to stress this, Wolf, if you look at the damage through here, there's a tremendous amount of damage to these homes. And to have a point of reference, this distance from here to here is about a mile, and about a mile over here. In this one block area here are about 1,200 homes around Plaza Elementary School. You go over here to Briarwood Elementary, you include this neighborhood over here, you pick up about another 600 homes. We counted these in the satellite image. You move over this way, you get another 500 homes over here and then about another 1,200 over in this block over here. So you can see how very quickly, Wolf, you reach about 3,500 homes that seem to be absolutely in the area that was just ripped apart by the storm going right through here. All indications are the heaviest damage is in through here. And as I said, about 3,500 homes in there, Wolf. There's gonna be a lot of digging out and a lot of assessment of the damage over the next 24 hours. Yeah, Wolf. that search and rescue operation, uh, as we can see, uh, uh, Tom, already intense, and as you give us good perspective, this is a pretty populated area, pretty densely populated area, one of the major suburbs of Oklahoma City, really literally touching Oklahoma City. Absolutely. This is a suburban area that has, if you were to go driving down the street before the storm, what you would see down this street is all sorts of popular restaurants and hotels and shopping centers. This is a Lowe's over here. There's a post office up here. There's a bowling place up here. Here's the movie theaters we mentioned, all of this. That reporter who mentioned a while ago being in the cemetery, the cemetery is right here. So he was right at the epicenter of this damage because, as you know, the school is right over here. So this is an area that is absolutely the heart of suburban America. Lots of people living in there, lots of services in here. And as we mentioned, there's already a choke point over here. It's going to be a, a real challenge for people there, as it always is in such circumstances, to simply keep these arteries open, to keep help flowing in and out and helping parents find their children, helping people who need help get out. Wolf. On the left side, part of the screen, uh, Tom, we're showing our viewers, there it is. These are live pictures coming in from our affiliate KFOR, the Plaza Towers Elementary School in Moore, Oklahoma, one of the major suburbs of Oklahoma City. You see search and rescue uh, workers there. They are on the scene. They're looking for survivors. Uh, they're looking for kids. This is a school of approximately 500 students from last year. That's the number uh, of kids that were there, uh, plus educators and administrators. Uh, this is a school that uh, literally has been leveled, as you can see, as a result of this tornado, an EF4 with uh, speeds, a preliminary rating between 166 to 200 miles per hour, ripping through this area. Uh, this, is, uh, this is an area that has been devastated, and hundreds of homes ripped apart as well. Nick Valencia is on the scene for us in Moore, Oklahoma. Nick, where are you? What are you seeing? Well, we're about two blocks away from the elementary school that was reportedly hit hard uh, by the tornado. We're seeing more and more people come sift through the rubble, sift through the debris. Uh, they're looking very dazed and confused, some of them uh, wandering just sort of aimlessly. But the devastation and destruction is as bad as it looks in the pictures. In fact, our team was at the hotel watching the tornado develop, uh, and we got on the road as soon, uh, as soon as we could. We got here, in fact, Wolf, even before some of the first responders. We hear sirens wailing. I, I could see an ambulance uh, probably about uh, uh, maybe three or 400 yards away from, from where I'm standing. And as far as my eyes can see, 
Uh, the homes are demolished. There's debris everywhere. Chimneys cracked. Houses ripped apart. Uh, the, the the outsides of the homes uh, completely leveled. Uh, telephone poles uh, slanted, uh, split in half. Uh, cars, uh, windows broken out. Cars stalled. Uh, residents just trying to look for their loved ones. I mentioned to you earlier when we first got on the scene, Wolf, there was a group uh, of about five or six young men uh, running through the debris, uh, calling out the names of their loved ones. Uh, we tried to talk to them. They were obviously not uh, very much so in a position to, to want to talk. They couldn't even find their home. They were looking for their home, and they couldn't even find it. It had been blown away. Right now I'm looking at uh, a, a dog that seems to be just sort of wandering uh, wandering around looking for its owner. Things look really bad here right now, Wolf. We're told that the Oklahoma University Medical Center, Nick, has uh, 20 patients already have been admitted, adults and children, especially those included in the trauma unit. Uh, we're only just beginning to get the, dis the, 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 the extent of the casualties uh, from this tornado. Let's listen into the chopper pilot from KFOR. And the debris is uh, somewhere uh, northeast of here. John, what I'm going to ask you to do, if you don't mind, you did this for us about an hour ago, but we've had so many more people join us. Could you please go back to where the, the twister entered Moore, Oklahoma, and follow through and describe to us what you are seeing so that people understand the devastation that we're looking at? And Mike Morgan says that he estimates 30 square miles mm -hmm. of devastation from this tornado that hit Moore earlier this afternoon. And we'll continue to follow Lance West's report from the school while you do that, John. Hey, Travis, back out and go to your left. Okay, well, we're going to back out and go to our left. And uh, you can kind of see just the scouring of the earth. All you're seeing is just dirt. Um, we'll keep going to the left past the Orr family farm. And we'll kind of pick it up right there about uh, from this distance. It'll be I-44 in the river. Um, so let me see here. Now you're on yeah, the right west, you you're on the the west side of Moore? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm on the west side of Moore. We'll go the damage path. Uh, so we'll kind of zoom in. We'll follow you. We'll, we'll bring this here. So we're, gonna, we're crossing. Uh, you know, we're crossing the land here. We're coming up on, uh, what's that, May? And then uh, the next intersection is going to be uh, Penn. After that, we're going to uh, follow. We're going to cross where we're at now. We're going to cross the Orr family farm here. If you'll back out just a little bit, Travis, and keep coming to the right. As when Tony Beverly reported earlier, he was reporting from right there. The, uh, we're starting to lose a John a little bit. But what he's showing you is the path of this storm as it moved through Moore, Oklahoma earlier this afternoon. 30 square miles of devastation believed to be estimated by Mike Morgan, our meteorologist. The death toll that we know so far are four confirmed deaths. We got those from Meg Alexander because she was there as they began pulling those bodies out. She said it was a man's body, a woman's, and a seven-month-old baby. and. Truthfully, my notes don't indicate who the fourth person may have been, but at least four fatalities so far in Moore, Oklahoma. Let's take it down to the ground in that heavy hit area there at ground zero, unfortunately, in Moore with Jesse Wells, our reporter on the scene there right now. Jesse. Well, Kevin, I'm standing here at the corner of Eagle and Southwest 11th. We've been talking about Plaza Towers Elementary a lot. We've seen it from the air. This is it right here behind me as I step out of the way and let uh, Joe zoom in. This is the front of Plaza Towers Elementary School. You can see again, we've said it before from the air, this school is basically gone. It's totally destroyed. Uh, most of the uh, walls collapsed. As you can see, there's a number of cars that were thrown into the front of this building. This is actually an office on the very front of the school. There's a truck, uh, an SUV of some kind, got thrown into the front of that school. Over here, just to the south, they've been, uh, emergency crews have been continuing to work on getting kids out of this school building. Again, uh, I told you a few minutes ago, I talked to a couple of kids that were in this school at the time. They were literally hugging the walls of the uh, interior hallways as that tornado went overhead trying to survive. They were being protected by some of the teachers that worked in this uh, school building. Again, right now, I do not know how many kids were inside or are still inside. Again, 
Apparently, there may still be kids inside the school. We really don't know the information. Very sparse coming out from down here. But again, you can see the search and rescue crews continuing to uh, treat the kids that were in this school, that uh, search for kids if there may still be kids inside. And honestly, it's not, of course, just the uh, school that got hit. As we pan around a little bit further, you'll be able to see that all around, 360 degrees around where I'm standing, all the homes literally leveled to the ground. Again, right now, very chaotic scene. People just trying to uh, search through a lot of these homes. Honestly, it's a search and rescue operation out here for a lot of folks. Uh, if they have loved ones, if they have friends, they haven't heard from them, they're out here looking around, trying to find out if their family members are still alive. It's really indescribable when you look around. All right, we're going to no continue to monitor there. what's going on. CNN's live coverage of these devastating tornadoes in Oklahoma will continue right after these messages. We'll have the very latest on the school leveled by the tornado.